that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when the fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived. No eye has seen any God besides you, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways, but you were angry and they sin, because you hid yourself we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider we are all your people. The word of the Lord. The second lesson is from 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, beginning in the third verse. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you are called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord. It is like a man going on a journey 
when he, could, when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he suddenly comes. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Why is hope so important? 
While living in a concentration camp during World War II, psychologist Viktor Frankl began to furiously take notes on whatever scraps of paper he could find. Fueled by his interest in the human mind, he recorded much of his experiences while in the concentration camp Dachau. He began to wonder if there was something that could explain or help him understand why some in the concentration camp survived and others didn't. And he came to the conclusion that the biggest reason why someone was likely to survive was because of the hope that they held on to. Frankl writes in his famous book, Man's Search for Meaning, a quote from the philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche. It says, the one that has a why to live can bear almost any how. And Frankl applies this to his experiences at Dachau. The ones who were more likely to survive are the ones that could identify a reason why they should continue on. And in the end, Frankl concludes that when we cling to hope, anything that gives us hope, we begin to see our experiences a little differently. We begin to see that though there is much darkness and brokenness in the world, there is light and there is healing in hope. This is what hope provides. When we fall asleep, when we lose hope, we stop preparing, we stop trying to do what we're called to do, we stop looking for Christ in our lives. Without hope, we come to despair. We become overwhelmed by the darkness and suffering and trials of this world. Without hope, we fall asleep. Martin Luther believed that despair was a spiritual crisis. It's something that plagues us to our very core. And we're constantly battling to stave off despair. And when we are led to despair, the only thing we can turn to is hope. Hope in Christ. We cling to that hope. It can be hard to stay awake, to maintain hope. We turn on the news and all it seems is bad news. We're reminded of the suffering in the world. We read books and we watch movies about future dystopias, seemingly saying that, well, things could be a lot worse. But what if we didn't settle for things could be a lot worse? What if we aspire to believe that things could be better? What if we hoped? Jesus tells us to keep awake, stay hopeful, don't despair, do not fall asleep. Cling to hope. And here's the thing about hope in Christ. It is hope based on certainty. It is certain because in baptism we are claimed as children of God. It is certain because at the table we meet Christ, who redeems us through his grace and tells us again and again we are forgiven that he is here, and that he will come again. It is through Christ that we have hope. Will there be times when we lose our way in the darkness? Will there be times when we feel abandoned and overwhelmed by despair? Will there be times when we wonder, what hope is there? Yes, there, there will be those times. We wonder if the sufferings of this world are too much. There will be times when we cry out like the prophet Isaiah, Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down. But as these times come, as the darkness threatens to extinguish the light, we come back to the font. We come back to the table. And we're reminded that we are the work of God's hands. We are God's people. So when we feel overwhelmed by the obligations at work, when we're stressed out from homework and practice, when we're bombarded and attacked by suffering, we are reminded to keep awake, 
remain hopeful. So today we light a candle to remind ourselves that Christ is here and Christ will come again. Today we light a candle to pierce through the darkness that tries to overwhelm us. Today we light a candle because it reminds us of our why. Today we light a candle for hope. Amen.